Good morning, and welcome back to MathForBreakfast.com. I'm saying welcome back because I'm assuming you saw the first lesson on how to, uh, uh, on factoring out a common monomial, and, and you said that was good. Give me some more, right? And so you're, and so part two is is where we are today. Uh, it's it's the sequel to, to part one. Um, uh, probably not as good as part one. Part one, I'll have more uh, details. This is part two, not because there's more to learn, but because I want to just give you one more example to really nail in the concepts from part one. All right, and so uh, here we've got a, another problem, factoring problem, because how do I know it's a factoring problem? Really, sir, uh, how? Because it says factor, ah! which leads me to step zero. Step zero. Uh, read the instructions, I-N-S-T, and look at the problem. Yes, that's right. Read the instructions and look at the problem. Why do I think that's so important? Well, head to mathforbreakfast.com. Click, 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 and I'll explain step zero. That, of course, looks like some sort of character. Um, all right. There, step zero. And uh, you'll learn all about uh, the value of step zero, but really, we do need to read, and, and it says it's a factor, and when we look at the problem, we see we have this uh, polynomial here. Uh, it's a clump of numbers and letters, plus or minus another clump of letters and numbers, and another clump, and, and so three of them, we call that a trinomial. Uh, if any more than that, we just call it a polynomial. Poly meaning many, 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 many omials. Um, so read the instructions and look at the problem. Well, it tells me a factor. I know it's a polynomial. Here's the steps I would follow. I would start with step one after figuring out why I had step zero by going to mathforbreakfast.com and step uh, one says look for a number that divides into all the coefs. All right, all. Coefs being the abbreviation for coefficients. A lot of syllables there, hard to write. So coefs is how we abbreviate it. You're looking for a number, the biggest number, that divides into all the coefficients. Coefficients are the numbers that are in front of each clump or term. This term here, or clump of numbers and letters all squished together by multiplication, has a 35 in the front. This one here has a 10 in the front. And this one here, all clumped and squished together, has a 25 in the front. So that means the 35, the 10, and the 25, those are the coefficients. And uh, the answer to this, when I look for a number that divides into all of them, and you're saying, well, the number does divide into 35, 10, and 25, and you've got your calculator out, and you've got a friend there going, friend, please tell me, help me, help me. And the friend says, <clears throat> five. The answer here, five uh, divides into the 35, the 10, and the 25. It's the biggest number that would divide into all of them. All right, there we go. That is it. Are we done? No, because we haven't finished factoring. Factoring, again, is when you take something, let's say this polynomial, and you break it up into two other things, or more, two or three other things, that when you multiply back together would get back to this, this answer. So we know we're done when we have things that are being multiplied together. This 5 is sitting there, now currently caged in my box, but it's sitting there, not done with the problem. Step 2. If step 1 doesn't do it, move on to 2 to help you. So step 2 is look for bars, variables, abbreviating that bars, which are just letters, all right? Look for variables that are in all terms. In parentheses here, look for smallest power. All right, there we go. I'm done kneeling. Again, kneeling is how we pay reverence uh, and respects to our problem, and thus hoping it will speak to us and, and give us good guidance. And so here we are, step two, look for the variables that are in all the terms. Well, I'm looking at my term here, term, all stuff squished together. And, and I look at this term here and this term here, and I say, well, I want a variable that, uh, variables that are in all the terms, m. Ask yourself, dude, really, is it in all the terms? Well, m, m, 
M. And the way you're, you're sh sure that it's in all the terms is because you can see it in all the terms. M, M, M. Hey, that's, that's it. Sometimes you want to make my math more complicated than it is. Say, how do I know it's, it's in a term? Well, it's because my eyes are open, and I looked, and there it is. It's an M, and, and it's there, and it's there. So that's the one I want to take out. So here we go. M is the smallest power of M in all terms. I'll keep underlining the alls here to emphasize the importance. M to the first, M to the third, M to the first. Okay, M to the first was the smallest one. I don't want to say get M to the third. This guy can offer M to the third. Three M's all multiplied together. This guy can only offer one M. So you have to go with the smallest one that any of these terms can offer, M in this case. Moving on, well, what else is common? Ah, I see an X. Raise your hand if you see an X, too. Ah, good. I see. Yes, you can. <laughs> like, like I can see you. But I know you wanted to get your arm up there anyway just to flex it out. Um, X is here, X is here, X is here. All three terms have X. What's the smallest power? Well, this is when you go back to basic arithmetic and you say, this is 4, this is an 8, and this is an 11. Those are the powers of my X's. And, well, 4 is smaller than 8, and 8 is smaller than 11. Four must be it, okay? It's that simple, really. I kind of sound a little snotty there. I'm not really trying to be. I'm trying to emphasize that. Re don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Smallest power means the smallest exponent, and that's four. So x to the fourth is the smallest power of x in all terms. All right, there we go. Are you actually getting down on your knees when you're writing your problem, even though you have no need to? Well, he's on his knees. I better write my problem up here. Okay, no. Now, it's only me because my board is short here. So we've got it. We've got a five. We've got an M. We've got an X to the fourth. Still not done. No, 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 we're not done because these guys aren't multiplied together yet. We need to take this and get some things that are multiplied together to tell us that we're done. We factored it. So a little pause, a little break here while I erase, remembering all the things we found from our prior two steps. And let's see how we put them together. And that's what step three is all about here. Step three. All right. Uh, write out, out um, the items from step one and step two. I'm just going to abbreviate that S1 and S2. All right. And put some parentheses. What does that mean? Well, from step one, we had a five. From step two, we had m, remember to the first power, and we also had here an x to the fourth. Now, some of you have been screaming at your monitors, saying, but dude, but dude, what about the, the y squared? Okay, I could hear your screaming. It's like voices mixing up with the other voices in my head, but I could hear your voices louder. And, and, and they were saying, why to the second? But what about why? You're, why? Why to the second? Why? Is it in all of them? No. And that's why we left that why to the second hanging here. It has to be in all of them. They either all have to give a why, or none of them can give a why. All right? So that's why we left it there. So step one told us five, step two told us m, and x to the fourth. And then I said, put some parentheses here. And I'm putting my parentheses about as wide as the original problem, just a little bit shorter. Uh, you won't need quite as much space as the original problem. And, and, then, and now, well, step four. Fill in the parentheses. Now, how would we do that? Well, let me tell you how we do that. Using multiplication. Here's the deal. I'm going to rewrite the problem so your notes flow nice and neat, so it's very organized when you read them later and use them to succeed. I'm believing in you. You're going to use these notes to succeed in your next problem. And so I want them to be organized to help you do that. So we've got this. And we say, we've got to fill in the parentheses by using multiplication. The question is, five times, because times, that's multiplication. Five times what gets me back to 35? Ah, I heard you clicking away at your calculator or your cell phone, whatever. And to five times seven, 35. Excellent. Question. 
I need an M here. Do I have an M out here? Yes, I do. Do I have enough? Yes. I don't need any more M's, so I don't need to write any more M's in here. X to the fourth. Well, I already have an X to the fourth out here, so I don't need to put any more X's in here to multiply to get back to this X to the fourth. We are done. Moving on, we take this minus sign, we carry it on down for simplicity, and we ask the question again. Five times, again, multiplication, what would get me the ten? And your answer that you're screaming at me because you're so excited, so am I, and is that five times two is ten. Let's continue the process. I need an m to the third. m times what? Well, m times m squared would get me back to m to the third. How do I know that? m to the third is m times m times m. I only have one m here. I need two more, m squared, so that the m times m times m would get me m to the third. Boom, we're getting there. Do the little getting there dance. Or not. So now, we're not done. X to the eighth here. Well, I got an X to the fourth. I need X to the fourth. Four more X's multiplied together to get me X to the eighth. Remember, when you multiply the same base, you add up the exponents. Four plus four gives me eight. Good. We're almost there. Again, carrying the signs down here. Plus. Well, five times what gets me 25? Of five. Fabulous. All right. I'm going to move this printing over. I got a little bit greedy there with my space. Uh, so then um, M times how many more M's would get me to M? I don't need any more. Leaving that blank. X to the fourth times what to get me X to the eleventh? Well, X to the, well, four plus seven would give me eleven. There we go. All right. Four X's multiplied with seven more X's multiplied gets me eleven X's multiplied. Finally, I need a Y squared. Do I have a Y squared out here? Negatory. So I'm going to have to multiply by a y squared in here. So this times the y squared would get me back to a y squared here. All right. So think about it. Um, 5 times 5 to give me 25. m times nothing to get me to the m, basically times a 1. And then x to the 4th times x to the 7th gives me x to the 11th. And finally, I don't have a y here, so I put the y in here, so I have a y squared. All right. Bam. That's it. We are there, and how do we know we are there? I can hear you thinking it. Not quite ready to raise your hand and yell it out, right? You get a little nervous, kind of fidgety, but you're saying to yourself, I know I finished the problem because now I have something, this monomial, times something else. And that's why, where I know, or how I know, I have factored the problem. I've taken it, split it into two things that would multiply to get me back to there. Again, why do I want it split out and not multiply back? It helps me solve equations, complex equations later that can give you interesting information like uh, how fast your bank account is being depleted or <clears throat> um, how fast we're eating up the environment. If we can solve those equations, then we can ward off the problem and perhaps even find a solution to uh, reversing the situation. Solving, solving, solving. Again, as I said in my prior lesson, you're, no, uh, you're not complete until you've boxed it. There we go. And that's so that the teacher can find the answer and give you the full credit that you deserve. We've done it. Sorry, I had a little spittle. Did you see that? It's, it's really disgusting. My apologies. So, uh, we have um, factor out a common monomial. So important, you must always at least try to factor out a common monomial when doing any factoring problem. If you don't factor it out and there was one to be factored out, the problem will be um, a lot more difficult to do and, and the answer is most, most likely going to be uh, wrong. Don't want that to happen. We are here to remember, if you go to my website, uh, the mission statement is help you learn math, so uh, I want you to not get it wrong. Uh, once we've factored out a common monomial, then there's other things. Factoring trinomials, factoring special uh, polynomials. So keep clicking through the lessons. Let's have fun.